Hi, my name is Dr. Rebecca Wallings. I am a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Florida. My research focuses on the role of the peripheral immune system, so essentially everything outside the brain. We quite often think of Parkinson's disease as a disorder that affects primarily the brain, but there are a ton of different comorbidities that come with Parkinson's disease. And it's been relatively well understood in the field for the last five or 10 years that the peripheral immune system might be contributing to the disease. So specifically what my area of research is focused on is how an aging immune system contributes to Parkinson's disease. So as you age, your immune system ages with you and your immune cells can become what is referred to as exhausted where basically they just don't work as well as they used to they're very slow they're very sluggish and they're not able to resolve inflammation as well as they once used to and we think it's that accumulation of exhausted immune cells that are potentially driving degeneration in the brain We've been aware of the role of inflammation in Parkinson's disease for arguably 30 years. However, it's only in the last 10 years that researchers have started to appreciate that inflammation is not just a byproduct of the disease, it is actually potentially contributing to the disease. So that's one way that this kind of new perspective is gonna change the way the field looks at inflammation. But kind of even more importantly is for the longest time, the field thought that inflammation in Parkinson's disease was something that was rampant. There was too much of it. It was something that needed to be decreased, it needed to be quashed in order to alleviate symptoms. But what my research has shown, that actually the complete opposite might be happening. So instead of dampening an already suppressed immune system, what we probably should be doing is trying to kind of rejuvenate it instead to make it work more efficiently. There's a number of approaches you can take. One of the approaches that I'm going to be looking at with my Parkinson's Foundation funded project is actually tackling the underlying mechanism that I think is making these immune cells exhausted and that's mitochondrial dysfunction. A lot of my data suggests that patients and also preclinical models that have certain genetic mutations that cause Parkinson's disease, as the immune cells age, their mitochondria don't work as efficiently and that is what is causing the exhaustion. So if we can potentially fix the mitochondria and allow the immune cells to have good, well-functioning energy, potentially we can reverse that exhaustion. With the Parkinson's Foundation support, it shows that they're willing to invest in my research and that what I'm doing could potentially lead to tangible differences in patients' lives. And the whole idea of the launch award that I've been given is that it's allowing me to transition to independence. I want to have my own lab where I'm kind of calling the shots with the focus being immune cell exhaustion. And with the Parkinson's Foundation support, that transition to independence is so much more likely. I feel really hopeful. Foundations like the Parkinson's Foundation are starting to invest and fund in researchers who are starting to think outside the box or outside the brain. <laughs> the field is changing and we are starting to go these other routes where we are thinking about the role of the gut, the role of infection, the role of environmental exposures and how that could be contributing to Parkinson's disease. Now people are starting to pay attention to kind of a whole systems approach to Parkinson's disease and I think it's those approaches that will make real tangible differences. Thank you. A huge thank you. As a young, early career researcher who's also female, being able to make a huge difference in academia as well and progress in the scientific field, it can be hard. But with the support that we get from foundations like the Parkinson's Foundation, who are so willing to invest in early career researchers' future development, I'm part of the Parkinson's Foundation family now, and I know I have their support. And that support makes a huge difference for individuals like me who are trying to gain independence and start their own research program.